one. This week on a special bonus episode of The Big Show, we will talk and review a couple of new summer releases, including the much anticipated sequel, uh, uh, aerial sequel, Top Gun Maverick and Firestarter. We'll have all that and more on a special bonus episode of Keeping It Real with Film Gordon. Let's go. All right, and welcome to Overtime, a special bonus episode of The Big Show. I'm Tim Gordon, joined again by Charles Kirkland Jr. Hey, man, this is not going to take long. There are two movies that we're going to look at this week, man. Uh, of course, we will save the best for last, of course, which is the sequel to the 1986 cultural phenomenon, which was Top Gun. Of course, that is Top Gun Maverick. But we're going to get started with Firestar. And Firestarter, of course, tells the story of a couple desperately trying to hide their daughter, Charlie, from shadowy federal agency that wants to harness her unprecedented gift for turning fire into a weapon of mass destruction. Um, this film is a remake of, uh, what is it, the 1980 film, Charles? 82. 1982 film. So, um, Charles, I didn't get a chance to see this. Um, but I know you did, man. So, uh, what's going on with Firestarter? So, so you were watching the offer. You couldn't watch Firestarter, huh? What are you talking about, man? That was another show. What are you talking about, man? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Um, Firestarter. Let's just say this is, uh, uh, based on the novel by Stephen King of the same name. It's a story about, like you said, a young girl named Charlie who uh, is trying to understand how she's mysteriously gained the power to set things on fire with her mind, hence the name Firestarter. Um, uh, Charlie is played by a young actress named Ryan Kiara Armstrong, and her father and mother are played by Zac Efron and Sidney Lemon. Um, they're being chased down by a gentleman named Rainbird who also has psychic powers. Now, the whole thing is about psychic powers. So the mother and the father, they both have psychic powers of their own. And somehow they've taken this uh, drug in a, in a study when they were younger, before they got together, and uh, that enhanced their uh, abilities. And so when they got together and had a child, their, their child now has super abilities, the combination of, of you know, the, the drugs that they took when they were young is, has given their daughter powers. Now, I'll just say this. Um, I, I saw the, the first version with uh, Drew Barrymore, and I thought it was just an average movie. Um, this version is not even average. It's it, it's below average, and I, I did not enjoy it. It's John Carpenter does the soundtrack for the film along with his, with his son, and they use a lot of the sounds that you would get from the Halloween soundtrack. So it kind of felt like you were in a different movie as the music was playing than the one that you were in, which was very off-putting at times to me. Um, I, th I thought the story wasn't fleshed out well. The, the, the movie is an hour and a half long, but this is one of those times when I think maybe they should have stretched it out a little bit so that they could explain how uh, little Charlie is getting her powers and how, I mean, because there's a lot of things that they changed from the novel into this film, and I don't think they all work well. Uh, um, it, it was very disappointing to me because uh, the novel is kind of rich in itself. And, and like I said, the first version, which a lot of people pay in, is much better than the second version. Gloria Rubin plays the captain of the governmental agency who's hunting them down. And her performance is this, and this is, I mean, not the quality that I usually see out of my girl, but you know, I, I understand some, I think everybody was just in this to get the paycheck. And I don't uh. think that they really did the work that they needed to do to make this a quality film. On my scale, I think it was a D. I'm sorry for a fire starter. Yeah, great technical aspects, but the story was terrible. The soundtrack was horrible and the acting was just average. All right, now you notice that um, I, I went to a movie background because 
You know, it's one thing to listen to you, but when it's time for me to come in and talk about movies, I got to get in the theater for this. All right, so you gave it an average grade. Uh, what does that mean on a on a, a three or four star scale? Uh, uh, I give it two stars at the most, and that and that's and that's because you know after having worn off from uh, seeing it, I, I I've, I've recovered some. But if I were to re- if I were going to rate it right after I saw it, man, that movie it was so bad I wanted to catch on fire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. There you have it with Firestar and it's playing in theaters coast to coast. Am I correct? Matter of fact, it's coast to coast, but they're also streaming it on Peacock at the same time. All righty. Okay, so let's move on to our final film of the day. And of course, that is Top Gun Maverick. Uh, after more than 30 years of service as one of the Navy's top aviators, Pete Maverick Mitchell, played by Tom Cruise again, is where he belongs, pushing the envelope as a courageous test pilot and dodging the advancement in rank that would ground him. Training a detachment of graduates for a special assignment, Maverick must confront the ghost of his past and his deepest fears, culminating in a mission that demands the ultimate sacrifice from those who choose to fly it. More from 1986 to now, we get uh, Top Gun Maverick. And let me tell you something, man. Let me start with this one. Um, I had to introduce a young person in my family to this movie because I took him to the screening. And um, we watched this movie, the original, two days before we went to see uh, the sequel. And I will just say, without spoiling it, that this movie leans heavily (laughs) into the first film so heavily that the opening sequence in the original is the exact same opening sequence that plays in Maverick. The only thing they changed, and I thought it was a really good, uh, a good thing they did with using Don Simpson, the late Don Simpson, uh, Jerry Bruckheimer's original producing partner, his name's still on this film. The, they, cha- they kept the same font. The only thing, instead of it saying Top Gun, they added Maverick at the bottom. Um, this movie almost feels, Charles, like if you watch it and let's say hypothetically, you can figure out how to splice it together and edit it so that the original ends, you know, the original ends and then you could kind of, you know, do like a, a, a black screen and then kind of meld it into the second one. It literally would play like one long three and a half hour story that I think would make sense, Charles. I mean, am I wrong? I, I don't think you're wrong. I think more of it as a mixtape where you got two tracks that are running at the same time and they're playing the same story and you you can switch from, you you, you fade from one side to the other side and you and you get each film and it's the, I, I don't know. I no, think- no, 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 but, but, that's, but, but stay with that. So my point is, is that, I told, I, I was sitting, did we sit next to each other or were you sitting someplace away from me? I was, I was away from you. Okay. I was, I was talking to a young man in my house who I brought to the movie with me. And I was saying, the last movie I saw that literally leaned into the story in this way was probably Hangover 2. That like, they literally, like Hangover 2 felt like I was watching Hangover again, except with a small tweak. Top Gun, and and this is not by any stretch of the imagination to say that Top Gun is bad, because I enjoyed, the the first one has a special place in my heart, right? You know, I saw it at a really impressionable time in my life. Um, The whole thing that, you know, in 1985, we had had Miami Vice. So we were opening up this era, Charles, where we were watching these, these wonderful visuals, and then you had the music coming in. You had the Berlin sound. I mean, the Berlin was on the soundtrack. You had Kenny Loggins on the soundtrack. You had uh, the Righteous Brothers on the soundtrack, which again is also funny because they use, (laughs) I would say, the majority of the music from the first film with the exception of a couple of songs. And I was really not happy that Take My Breath Away, they couldn't have found a place to play that in the movie. They played everything else, you know, uh, and you lost that love and feeling was such a huge part of that that first film. So those were my only nitpicks. 
But this this film, Top Gun Maverick, I think the story continues. As I said, they 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 sought to bring back a couple of key characters from the first one, including Val Kilmer, and what emotionally is probably the best scene, one of the best scenes in the movie. Killed me watching that scene. Like, wow, Val Kilmer is back in this role in this film. Um, there's a new character played by Jennifer Connelly that they do a small backstory to kind of bring you up to speed. And then, of course, you know, if you watch the original, which I'm not spoiling, if you haven't seen Top Gun by now in 1986, then I'm not spoiling the fact that Goose dies in the film and Goose's son is played by, uh, from the offer, uh, Miles, Teller. Miles, Miles Teller. Teller. So Miles Teller. So it's a very emotional story. Um, I think Tom Cruise, you know, I, I, I don't personally see them making another Top Gun. <laughs> Do you? I think I think this was it. Uh, But but what a ride this is. This thing drops in theaters on the 27th next Friday. This movie is going to be pretty special. man. I I, I think this is going to be a litmus test, Charles, because we talked on this show about how, you know, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and the Batman and uh, Spider-Man No Way Home um, have been films that have really brought big audiences out. Um, we talk about the litmus test is whether this film will also be that crowd pleaser that, pleaser that will bring people back. The reviews are great. On it. I'll tell you that much. The reviews are absolutely great. Charles, what say you about Top Gun Maverick? All right. Brace yourself. Brace yourself for this, because I'm going to say this. Tom Cruise belongs to the Church of Scientology. And I'm, I'm sure that after seeing this movie, that this 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 they got to be aligned with Satan somehow because the Tom Cruise or he's got a picture of Dorian Gray sitting up in his room. <laughs> I do not understand how Tom Cruise can do all the things that he does in this movie, look the way he does in this movie, and, and, and I mean he looks almost exactly the same as he did in the first movie. Jennifer Connelly is younger than him in real life, but she looks older than him in this movie I, by a by a good amount older than him in this movie. I am amazed at how Tom Cruise holds himself together and, and does the stunts that he does. And I, I thought this movie gave me all the feels of the, the original Top Gun, where I was like excited at parts and jumping up and down. And uh, I mean, dog fights and all kinds of stuff were happening. It's, I think I was worried that it was gonna be hard to play to uh, this generation. Uh, and yes, there's a lot of stuff that harkens to the first movie, but you don't really need to have seen the first movie to enjoy this because the movies are so similar in their arcs that, you know, you can jump in on Top Gun Maverick, not Top Gun 2, Top Gun Maverick and enjoy it just as much as you would the first film. It, it, the first film is not a prerequisite for this film for you to enjoy it. However, if you do have seen the first one, you will, there are some things in there that's going to make you go, oh, wow, that's cool. I love that part. I love that part. I love that part. So I, I really had fun with this movie. Again, what you said about the Val Kilmer scenes, incredible, heart-wrenching. Um, because I, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to spoil it for the audience, but Val Kilmer has suffered a lot of uh, problems and that ha has almost forced him into retirement from acting. And for him to come out for this film, what he does in this film, incredible. Really enjoyed it. Um, Top Gun, I, it, let's see what it's gonna do. I, I, I hope that this is the springboard for the rest of the summer season. We talked about the summer season last year, a uh, last show, and th this could be the one, this could be the one. Well, I, I, what I will say in closing, man, is that, um, you know, you made a good point about you don't have to see uh, the first film in order to enjoy the second one. That may be true. But if you do see the first film, it, it, will, heighten, it will heighten the level of enjoyment that you have. And I think that was the key uh, to this film. I, I can't wait to see it again, man. I mean, I really enjoy uh, Top Gun Maverick, man. If I had to give it a grade, I'd give it a B plus. I'm not going to go with an A, um, but I thought it was really, really well done. Tom Cruise continues to amaze. I love your Dorian Gray reference. Um, I didn't. I don't think he looked exactly 
like he looked in the first film, even though they do have a sequence in there where they show something from the first film trying to pass it off from the second film. I'm like, come on, that wasn't Tom Cruise, man. That, that, <laughs> that, was, that was from 1986. That was not from 2022. But uh, nice try, though. <laughs> nice try. You tried to get me. Watch this. It would have worked had I not seen the film 48 hours earlier and like, mm-hmm. <laughs> but Top Gun Maverick is really good. What grade would you give it, Charles? I gave it a straight B. I, I was going to go with the plus because uh, because the story was so simple, but because of just the emotion of the film, I gave it the B. All right, so there you go. Uh, we talked about Firestarting, which Charles basically was like, stay away from that. We're both pushing you to check out Top Gun Maverick. It's in theaters on Friday the 27th. Uh, I, if I were you, uh, I would I would let it take your breath away and go back and check it out. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey Charles, I I feel the need to speed. <laughs> that, that was the one line I missed. I was hoping that they said it. Yeah, but they didn't. They didn't bring that one back. They didn't bring that one back, man. But uh, Maverick, uh, let me salute you, brother. That was that was a good attempt. You see my my Marine Corps salute. Damn. Don't hate Charles. Bam. Look at it. See, I just can't make up. There it is every time. All right, man. So that is it for our bonus episode. Uh, you know, of our film reviews. Uh, as we said earlier, check out Firestarter Maverick. Uh, Top Gun Maverick is in theaters on the 27th. Uh, so until next time, as we tell you always, please see something good at the movies. We're giving you a couple of options. You make the choice. You guys take care and we will see you in a couple of weeks. Enjoy your evening. Good night.